What's up everybody? This is CryptoBox with another video. If you're new here, I make videos daily about blockchain games and NFTs. Subscribe if you're here to make some gains. Also, check my Discord and Telegram down below in the description. You can find me there, ask me questions, give me suggestions, and communicate with other people. So let's get started with the video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a more update to Wanaka and Wanaka Farm. Now, this is just more of an update and overview on their new announcements and how those land and rarity and all that work. Uh, basically into this video now as you can see this is Wanaka's to uh, coin right here you can see it's decreasing and declining but that doesn't mean the game is bad or anything the game hasn't even came out and you guys uh, might be complaining already but uh, just uh, calm down nothing bad is going on it's just uh, a little decrease in coin uh, price but that doesn't mean anything bad is going on right now so we're just good right now uh, it's at a price of 2.46 dollars and uh, you can see it drops sometimes it goes it's just little spikes in one day graph seven days you can see it started going down around here and uh yeah so if you go to uh, their announcement right here this is their medium where other crypto uh platforms can use medium to like communicate with their community and uh bring out new updates and tell them all about it and patch notes and whatever like that uh, you can see Wanaka Farm Virtual Lands, your most valuable valuable NFT property. So this is just a, a, like an introdu introduction to statistics for land and the game and how it works and the use of it. So you can see here, um, welcome to the Wanaka Farm Lands. Wanaka Farm has been unique, has been a unique blockchain and NFT game. Today we're happy to introduce you to our most valuable lands NFT property. Designed to play, collaborate in our Wanaka farm world. So, uh, this is just an introduction. You can see also introduction. And I'm just going over uh, the more important things here. So, you can see there's different types of land. I've explained this in my last video. Uh, but I'm going to re-explain in this video, obviously. Uh, there's uh, different types of land environments. And the basic land will be the first to be launched. For each land... Players can experience up to four seasons, so you can see here there's spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Now, obviously, you would want like three of these here, and uh, winter is like uh, you wouldn't want it, but it's there. So you can see uh, just four seasons, just like real life, nothing different. And the maximum number of seasons that are at attributed to each land is randomly set. You could have uh, all of them, you could have one, you could have two, three, four, it could be one of any of them. And it just goes like that. You can see land, rarities, and influences. So, obviously, you can see here that there's common, uncommon, rare, legendary, mythical, and immortal. So, immortal being the highest rarity and best for the game, you could say. And common being the lowest rarity, lowest price, and, you know, not that special. Uh, six rarities... And uh, each land contains a percentage of two attributes, reducing time of growth and percentage of mutation. So obviously these are better, reducing time of growth for your seeds and plants could help you boost your uh, farming. And then percent of, percentage of mutation, uh, it's like mutating your seeds, maybe getting multiple of them, maybe getting a, like a more rare um, harvest. Based on the rarity of your land you own, harvesting time will be shortened. The rarity also helps to buff the mutation rate on your land. Common land still has a default mutation rate from the start. And you can see the seasons here. So um, if you're getting like one land, you have an 8% chance of getting one season, an 8% chance of getting one season, 60% uh, chance of getting two seasons, 24% uh, chance of getting three seasons, and 8% chance on getting four seasons. So... You could get uh, probably the most here you could get is obviously two seasons, but um, you can obviously get like three seasons as it's the second highest and then you got the other two, which is uh, either four seasons or one season. Now you can see land levels. Upgrading land does not change your rarity nor the seasons attributed on your land. Leveling up land for only increases the number of farming slots and unlocks your new items for farming. So here you can see mutated items. And these are mutated cabbages, it says. And uh, obviously, it's it doesn't look like a normal cabbage. It looks like it's, um, you know, cool and rare and might sell for a lot if you could sell this on the market. Uh, once you start farming, it will, might give you mutated items. Once mutated, that item will not be able to, able to breed or produce anymore. 
However, you can replant it on the land as a form of staking. Each mutated item has two far factors of quality as well as weight. These two factors depend on whether you take care of watering, feeding frequently or not. So obviously you're going to have to water your plants, give it good lighting, whatever. How it works in real life goes into here. Um, if you don't, obviously this could uh, change the way. It may, might not be healthy, might be healthy for the plant. You don't know. So it's basically on how much you take care of your plants. Quality and weight will determine determine the total amount of certain Y or WAI that it will generate on your land. However, this WAI will be daily generated and will stop when fully paid to you. So this is like uh, a certain token. You know you have you have SLP for Axie Infinity. This could be the same thing for Wanaka. So you earn this type of token from playing the game. And uh, just how Axie Infinity gives you SLP uh, if you play the game and earn. When mutated items no longer produce WAI, when there is a special trade-in event, you can use the number required of your mutated items in exchange for new mutated items. So trading, you could use three of your must, uh, mutated items in exchange for a new one. Uh, so it's just trade-ups and doing stuff like that. Uh, can player without land can join the game? So basically, can you join the game without land? Yes, you can. It says the answer is yes. However, there will be no free to play. You'll still have to invest in Wana in order to open four slots or four plots on default land. Field, planting, pond, farming. So these are the four slots you're going to be using. Uh, field. So you're going to have to have a field. Uh, put plant, plant on there. Have a pond, farming, and all that. After that, like many other farmers, you still have to invest to buy seeds and stuff which is available in Wana Shop. Default Land also has the ability to produce mutated items. There's also few daily quests taking place on Default Land for all players. Meaning uh, you have quests just like Axie Infinity. You do your quests, you get money through in return. And uh, that's basically it for their big announcement about land and how it works and how the game works. Now, uh, this is just a cover-up and description uh, letting you know guys in a more simpler way. If you don't want to read, you have this video here and uh, I explain things in detail sometimes too. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Comment what you want for the next video and what game you recommend. And I'll see you guys later.